Okay, so we've got our colors here for the goat painting. We're gonna be using lamp black, titanium white, phthalo blue, yellow ochre, burnt sienna, burnt umber, and purple lake. Using a half inch flat wash, we're gonna start in the background. And if you'll notice in this original, it's got a lot of underpainting. So I'm gonna start in the background, a little bit of water on my brush, not a lot. Start in the background with some burnt umber. One around the sides. You can add in a little burnt sienna if you want a little bit of a tonal change. You can use a bigger or smaller brush. The uh, half inch flat does a lot. You can thin this underpainting out. Underpainting helps with contrast and value. And that makes your painting a little more richer after the second layer. Most paintings have three layers, but we try to do about two, one and a half, maybe one with detail at the end. So just want to go around my goat head, get some color in that background. And we don't want a lot of water. The water is just to move the paint on the surface. This is a slick surface canvas. So too much water will get soupy. If you're using a professional canvas or one that's been gessoed a second time, you may need less or more water depending on your gesso or your canvas. You just gotta get a feel of how much. And when you're loading your brush, you wanna thin the paint out Kind of at a 45 degree angle on both sides, keeping the paint at the end of the brush and not uh, getting on the metal, the ferrule of the handle. Now, in between the underpainting and the next layer, you need to make sure this layer is completely dry. Especially on this kind of canvas where it'll strip all your paint off back down to the base, and we don't want to do that. We want more paint, not less. And with a larger brush, you would go faster in the background, but um, painting is about quality, not quantity. So take your time. Your brush strokes really don't matter on this first step. Because we're just doing an underpainting. Now, depending on the design, sometimes your brush stroke matters on the first step. But uh, painting like this is more fluid. You see a lot more of the brush strokes. And when we get to the goat, and painting in the hair, the brushstroke is important in which direction. So it shows the movement of the hair, the integrity of the shape. So a lot of this is gonna be covered, again, with that top coat. So if you, if you miss some spots, if you see some white spots, it's okay, because you're gonna have more paint on top. I don't have to stress about it. So um, you can add a little bit into this area, but this is actually part of the goat. 
um, the hair. So we don't want to confuse the hair with the background. Okay, while that's drawing, I want to focus on uh, the goat's eyes. Go ahead and get those done. And our goat uh, has beautiful, creepy eyes. <laughs> so I'm going to start with the iris part of the eye, and I'm going to use a little bit of yellow ochre. Now you can spend a lot of time on eyes, and they're really important to bring out the animal, but I'm just going to rough them in. If we need to come back and put more detail in later, we can. I'm going to use a little bit of that darker brown, the umber or the sienna, whichever. I'm going to go around where the pupil's gonna be, just to give us a little bit more shading. Um, dry my brush off. So blending is, is important that you have a dry brush, but wet paint. So I'm just gonna lightly, kind of at an angle, kind of rub that in to get a little blend there. And if it rubs off too much paint, remember you can do an, another layer. So you want a little bit of a fade. Now if you need to lighten it, grab a little bit of white. Just lighten the bottom of the section, dry my brush off. Kind of apply a little bit of that white, then dry your brush, then kind of rub it in a little. Don't overwork it. You can overblend and you lose your color. You lose the definition in between the colors bit more white there. And now I'm going to grab some black, go in there for that pupil. Now you've got a lot, a little bit more detail around this eye. So like the eyelid um, and the part of the, the head that comes down, it's kind of covering a little bit of the eye there, kind of overshadows it. So I don't want to go too far with my pupil. So I'm holding that flat wash, just twist it. Hold it steady on the top side, just twist it down. It'll give you a nice round pupil. Got a little bit of shading down here that's gonna be important. So I don't want to get too far into detail, but I do want to kind of put in some dark areas. There's things that are furthest away from us on the animal. That way we can build the face around the mouth or the nose. Got a little smile going on.
I'm going to put a little bit of darkness in the, the ear for shading because the hair needs to go on top of the shadow. Okay, before we go too far, let's get a little bit more dark at the top of this, this side here. A bit more on the side here. Clean my brush off really well. And I wanna add some white and go ahead and get some highlights on the eye before I go forward. Now, I just wanna use the tip, the corner of my brush the edge get a little bit of white on there gonna go up high on that pupil now this is recording backwards so um, hopefully it'll be okay a little bit more highlight there top of the eye here a little bit more bright in the bottom of the iris. Gonna give it a little bit of a highlight on the eye here also. Okay. So hopefully your background is dry now because before we do too much more with the goat itself we want we want to finish that background so mine is fairly dry all over fans on so it doesn't take long or if you're painting this outside right now it's probably pretty hot and it'll dry pretty quickly also if it's not dry give it a few more minutes Usually five minutes is pretty good unless it's a thick layer. So I want a light blue, so I want to thin my blue out on my palette. I never dip into the top of my paint because it contaminates, especially your white. You always want to pull from the side. Now that phthalo blue is very vivid blue, and you could use ultramarine, but I like the phthalo because it's pretty versatile and you get really deep colors for the forehead. I'm going to grab a little bit of Purple Lake so I can get that more on a purple side for the background, not too purple, just a little bit. And I wanna come in here and start filling in that background. Now I'm gonna let some of that brown show through. Remember that's your underpainting, kind of sets a tone. Adding some white to get it lighter in areas. And I like to see my brush strokes. You don't wanna to see too much of it to where it becomes a distraction but uh, it is nice to see the artist's hand in a painting. So you know that's something real. So if you can see, you've got a little bit of outlining that stays um, visible. And you can see through that layer. Even with white being opaque, you're still gonna be able to see through that layer, unless it's really thick. So. You also don't want too much moisture on your brush on this step because it will loosen that, that layer that's just freshly dried. It can loosen that and pull it off and we don't want to do that because then we'd have to color match and paint two more layers and go backwards. So pull that. I do recommend that you go around your sides and paint this unless you're getting it framed. That way you can hang it straight on the wall. 
So I only mix a little bit of paint at a time as I go. I never mix a lot of paint. Um, some people need to uh, until they're comfortable mixing paint. That way they don't run out of the color they need. But the more you do it a little bit at a time, the more you get comfortable with mixing paint and uh, you don't feel that little bit of anxiety when you're starting to run out of a certain color that you've mixed. So I recommend that you continue to mix little bits at a time. And it's, it's a repetition. The more you do it, the easier it gets, the more comfortable you are with mixing paint. So you've got some choices to make when you're painting the background. You can decide if you want more blue, more purple, more white, if you want to see more of the underpainting or less of it. Uh, those are choices you're making along the way. Whatever makes you happy and whatever looks good to you. And see, that's a little dark for me, so I need to grab white, put that white in. Be careful that it's not getting too thick. So thin it out. If you got a lot of paint on there, come over here, rub some paint in another area of your painting so you're not wiping it away and wasting it, but you're distributing it, redistributing in other areas. If you go over the line for the goat, it's okay. Because we're gonna be painting the goat. And remember, you can always come back. Acrylic is so forgiving. Always come back and add more color later. painting again we want to start as far away from us and work our way forward drawing is the opposite you start drawing closest to you and then work your way backwards so the furthest thing from us now is um, the neck area here I'm just going to turn this slightly a little bit so I can get a different movement with my brush strokes and we've got some light brown, so I'm going to be using uh, burnt sienna, burnt umber, and also a little bit of yellow ochre. And then we've got those dark shadows. Um, that's the blue, the blue hair that you see coming out. So I want to start with my darker colors. We usually go dark to light, but we've got some layering to happen here. So with my burnt umber, I'm going to come down here below his chin. And you may need it darker, so I'm going to add a little bit of black to mine to get it a little bit heavier in there. So if you ordered a kit, you'll have some lead lines here and you can, those are suggestions of where to start and change your color. But remember, this is yours. Getting that little bit of that black, a little bit of that brown, and coming in here where we need it a little bit deeper. 
And remember your brush strokes at this point are important. You want to make sure that hair feels like it's falling down because he's got that little goatee. He's got that hair um, here. And we'll worry about that hair on his chin last because that sits on top of his neck hair. see those curves kind of go with the body, the way the hair lays, reinforces that shape. Now I'm going to get some more brown tones in here. When you start to add the lighter tones, that's when it really um, starts to bring the shape into focus and the hair. I'm gonna grab a little bit of yellow ochre with my burnt sienna. And you'll notice my, my palette is a little messy, but I try to keep the colors where I can still see what's happening. So, now I want to start on the head going up a little. We've got some hair here on the back, and I want to fuzz that a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and do the inside of the ears. to darken that up a little bit so I'm gonna add some black. Still burnt sienna with a little bit of black when it's needed.
So it's all about layering. Before we move on to the lighter parts of the ear, we need to go ahead and worry about the horns. I'm gonna clean my brush off. I'm gonna start with, uh, since the forehead's a lot lighter than the, where the horn starts, so I'm gonna use a little bit of Yellow Ochre Plus Burnt Sienna. So it's gonna be darker than the forehead, but we still need to have a, um, not too, we don't need it too dark. We just want the contrast. So we know where the head stops, the horns start. And remember dark to light. So you might need to add in a little bit of burnt umber, maybe even a little bit of black there to get it darker where it separates, and separate the head. And remember these brush strokes, like these are down, the ones on the horns are gonna be side to side, kind of curved. That way it shows the growth of the horn. Towards it going back into space, away from the head. I'm gonna use a little bit of black and get some more depth right up along the head. And I'm going to take that over forehead, kind of outline it a little bit. Color helps show the shape. So changing that color from dark to light, depending on where the light's hitting it, really does help make it a better painting. A little bit of black at the end. I'll grab some more water. Get that yellow ochre now. And I want to do um, brush strokes that are curved and kind of wide. And you know, so I'm going pretty fast because I don't want all of that paint to dry before I brush into it. I'm going to also add some white and start adding white curved in with that, that other paint that's still drying. That way it blends in a little bit and we get, now what, I don't want to go all the way up with it because this is where the light's hitting. It's going away so it's catching more light. Hence the more white you'll see. And if you want it bolder, you can always add more white. Moving on to the other side, those curved lines. You can bring it back the other way. And you can turn your canvas any way that makes it easier to paint these. not too light at the end of this one so I don't want to get too bright pull in a little bit more burnt umber excuse me burnt sienna right there Maybe a little bit more yellow ochre Now that we've got those horns done, that allows us to do the forehead and that hair kind of sit on top. So it sets it in the background a little bit. Okay. I'm going to go back down to this area and start working in those blue, beautiful blue and purples of the hair here. So your phthalo blue, it's a really bright, it's a really intense blue. You might want to tone it down with a little bit of black. We can get it lighter, but remember dark to light is going to be the best way to show a color transition. Now with the dark, with a lot of dark pigments like this, adding a little bit of white 
really starts to pop it out. We don't want to do that yet. dark on the side of his face, that blue. Look, I want it a little bit darker up near the eyes, so I'm going to add some black in. Blue, black. Add a little bit of purple. bit of purple along the head also that blue yeah but instead of wiping my brush off I'm just going to clean it here by adding in a blue and purple on the nose so these brushes are easy to draw with if you hold them straight up and down little bit of white. Okay, I'm going to go back to the ears. Since we've got that underpainting in the ears, we can now start doing the lighter tones on the ears. We've got some lighter tones down here too, so you can work uh, this and the ears at the same time with some yellow ochre. Make sure your brush is pretty clean because that um, that blue is pretty pretty tough and it'll turn that yellow ochre green. Do that. I'm just going to touch in some lighter and you can do this later but I just kind of like to see some of the color coming out now. A little bit of color back here. And if you want it lighter than that, just grab a little white. grab too much, come back in with a little bit of your brown tones, I tone it down a bit. Hold 
pulling my brush sideways, just pulling little strokes back and forth to get kind of a more idea of hair in there. Okay, I'm going to start with this here over here. Grab a little bit of yellow ochre. Now, it's going to be dry, so if you want it to blend, you're going to have to re-wet around that burnt sienna that we added in there. white with the yellow ochre. So I want some highlights around here to start popping it out. A little bit more white. Now, if you need to add a little bit more detail, again, you can do that now, or you can come back and do that later, because we've got like a little split right here in the ear. So I came in, hit the top with a tiny line of black, let it disappear, and under, doing another little um, black line. So you've got that little black line on the top, and then it goes below. So you've got a little crease in the ear, and a little bit more black here just to make it pop out. Going really slow, light pressure. That'll keep a thin line. In the bottom, I'm going to do the same thing with a little bit more black just to keep that. That ear separated. This is black on my palette, but it was mixed with a little bit of blue, so it kind of looks uh, like a bluish green color, but I need a little bit more dark through here. So, Missing some highlights down here on this little goatee. I'm gonna add a few more strokes. I took a little break and had lunch. Came back and it's easier to see things if you walk away from it and then come back. Give it a little bit more character. Turning that brush sideways to get the hair a little bit more pointed at the end. Of course, if we need to add some highlights back, do that. And you can do this at the end too. Okay, I'm going to finish up this other ear. Now I'm going to be working that. Burnt sienna is dry, so we can re-wet that kind of like we did on the other ear. He's got a lot of blue on this ear too. I'll get to that in a second. I'm gonna bring in some of the yellow ochre. More sienna.
Now with some white and yellow ochre, lighten up these edges of the ear. You might have to come back and do this after putting the blue down, but I'm just kind of getting some in here now to see. Right, we can get it. You get a little bit of black on my brush. I want to kind of outline where this little whip on the ear is and how it dips down and follows the contour of the ear actually this way instead of that other line. That other line is going to be covered with some blue. Okay, now we want to bring some blue in and we want this blue to kind of be similar to these. So you can mix a little blue and black or just straight blue, maybe add a little bit of purple lake to it. So I'm adding a little bit of that purple lake. Looks like he's got a little eye shadow. Right. I'm going to come out with some of that blue. Now, if that ochre is still wet, it's going to turn the blue to green tones. So be careful with that. And this blue in the top right ear is almost like it's being used as a shadow instead of like the hair like down here, or it's just the hair in shadow. But using blue or purple for shadows is nice instead of black or a darker um, shade of whatever color is being in, put in shadow. This will get a little deeper, a bit of burnt umber in there. Edge of that shadow. Cutting in the eye a little bit with some blue. Down the side of the face with a little bit more blue. You can add some purple in there, give it some tonal change. It's pretty nice. Maybe a touch of white on the side, not too much. Okay, so I want to focus on some blue areas on this side of the face. It's a little blue and black mixed together, so you want the darkest on the, the face. That's going to go down and kind of wrap around the side of this little mouth down there.
Add some purple. I'll start wiping my brush off in the center. A little bit of blue and purple. Put some of the purple down first. And I'm going to darken that blue with a little burnt umber. So that hair kind of splits here and some's going this way, some's coming this way. So you want to Try to do your brush stroke with the way the hair is laying. Now you can do around the face before you do this. Um, so we might touch up the color in the middle a little bit. Got kind of black around the edges of the colored area. So it's, it's best if you come back in and put that down after you finish coloring the rest of the head because you want this hair to sit on top of the other hair. So this would be the hair, the hair closest to you, the forehead, and the hair underneath that really needs to be done first and you build up to that part that's closer to you. But just because my brush was already dirty and I know we may touch it up, I'll probably go ahead and put some color in. Add a little bit of white in that center right. A little bit more just to make that shine a little bit. Got a little bit of color here too, but right now I want to work on all this creamy area back behind. So that's going to be titanium white, a little bit of yellow ochre, and uh, a touch of burnt umber or burnt sienna, depending on how warm you want it to be. I'm going to start near the mouth and start putting in a little bit. I'm just going to touch in a little bit of yellow ochre and then come in with white. Now you can mix this on your palette first if you feel better doing it that way. But you can also mix paint directly on the canvas. I'm going to darken it up kind of at the base a little because we're going to be putting some more hair down here. Oops. I'm just touching in where I know we're going to have a little bit darker hair on the bottom side of the face. A little bit of brown.
So I'm doing short strokes. So I want a little bit of texture in there. careful if your blue is still wet because you could touch it right now and pull it into this lighter area and we really don't want to do that. So it's nice to jump around and work in different parts of the face to make sure you're getting you're getting a lot of the same tones in the hair in different areas. It's a little bit darker up in this area and here. So that's a little bit of burnt umber, a little bit of white. Might have a touch of yellow ochre, just a little bit. I'm gonna pay attention to those eyes in just a minute. Depending on the burnt umber you're using, this this burnt umber kind of turns almost to a mauvey color. So it's a neutral, it's good for some shading around the forehead. I'll put some thicker chunks of hair, yellow ochre and white.
just fuzzing these edges up a little bit. Just touched in some of that blue when it's moving, but it's okay. Some white up in this ear. A little bit over here to lighten it up. Maybe a little bit more on those horns. A couple of little details. Around the eyes with some white. So I've got this little spot right here. Add some blue and purple in there. Maybe a little bit of black if we can't get it dark enough. So we want to show a little bit of feather, feathering on this part over top. So I'm going to get my brush holding it kind of at a point and kind of go around. If my brush starts getting a little bit out of control, add some water to it. You can reshape it or just pull it sideways. We don't want too much water, but this little bit of brown, a little bit of black. And we want our hair to feel like it's sitting on top. This little beauty mark. better to do this when it's a little dry at uh, those other two layers because this this and this because if not it can mix so you don't have to do this all the way around but in a few places just to give the feeling that that's hair sitting on top Let's see we've got a, a mark down here we didn't do a little bit here, a couple of little lines just to make some things pop out. Giving some my blue whiskers down there. A 
lighten that bone underneath the eye just a little bit with some white. Like a little bit lighter under there so you can see the structure of the face. Plus, that's pretty blue colors. Okay, there's a little bit more around this eye that we need to do. So, I want to eat some white and a little yellow ochre. And I need to kind of cover up some of this. On this side of the eye, we need to kind of get rid of some of that. So it's either hair, just or, or a little bit discoloration there. So we're hiding a little bit of that. Same thing on this side, just a little bit. Could be translated as eyelashes. Give him a little bit. I want a little bit more white as a highlight in the eye itself. I'm gonna do it on the same side, same place on both sides. Now I'm gonna outline a few areas just to have some more separation little bit of pop. When you're doing this, you can do it with Sharpies, pens, pencils, anything, but I like to use my brush. You don't need to connect all the lines to make it kind of pop out, and it doesn't have to stay right on the edge. It can go inside the design some or stay in the background a little bit, kind of be free with it. And as you go, you might see a few places you need to add some more darks. Okay, all right, just a couple of little lines around the side to make it pop. Don't, you don't have to do it at the chin where he's got his goatee, but it does kind of separate it a little bit. If you want some more lines down here. A little bit on the ear. And you can fuzz this mouth up a little bit. If you've got a blender brush, you can blend it in so it's not a stark line. So you want a little bit of <clears throat> white around that opening, but you want shadow there too. If you want to give him a little bit more blonde goatee, just pull a couple more. And you can actually touch the chin on this layer to pull some of those down so it feels like it's more on front than these other strokes. Okay. Okay, and there's your coat.